Welcome back to another C Sharp video. In this one, we are going to be taking some of the scripts that we've wrote for the Black Hat Python series and just porting them over to C Sharp. We're going to start with the very basics here, and we're going to be first covering how to create TCP client with C Sharp. And then in future video, we're going to create a TCP server and then replicate Netcat and stuff like that. And I find that using a language that you've already learned you know, like Python or whatever it may be, to learn your next programming language is often a really good idea because it allows you to see things in, you know, from a different perspective, but also streamlines the process because you don't have to think of, okay, what should, what should I create? You don't have to, also, you don't have to follow tutorials. I mean, tutorials are a totally viable option, but if you, if you don't want to just sit there and do tutorials and you want something that is a little bit more challenging because you're going to have to get, you know, Google stuff and figure out on your own how to implement these things. I would really recommend to take this kind of approach where you take stuff that you've written in one language that you already know and try to write it in the language that you're learning. So we're going to do exactly that in this video. So let's just get into it here. And as you are learning this, uh, the different programming languages and, you know, different fundamentals of pen testing, eventually you're going to come to a point where you're ready to start applying to jobs and at that point, definitely want to check out the top 10 pen testing interview questions to ensure that you get to that next round and eventually land the job. So definitely check that out down in the description section below, absolutely for free. So getting into the actual code here, we are going to start with a couple imports here. So we're going to start with using system and we're going to define a variable that we'll call client. And the way that we are able to very easily implement a TCP client in C Sharp is to use the built-in TCP client class. So we're gonna instantiate that class. And if we go to the documentation, we see there is a TCP client class. And this is the code. So basically what it does is it provides a client for connections for TCP network services, exactly what we want. And we can even look into the example code here that they're showing to establish a connection. So you see here, they initiate it like that. And they define the data they want to send. And then the, they run this get stream here. So, We'll pretty much do the same thing. Now, one thing that we can look at here as well is if we scroll down a little bit, it'll tell us, it'll kind of step us through exactly what we need to do. So the first really important thing is that we need to call one of the available connect methods. So we can actually click on this link here and we can see exactly how we can do that. Three different ways to do that, in fact. So the format I'm gonna use is this second one here. I'm gonna call it connect, passing in the IP address, and then the port number as an integer. You'll see specified IP address and port number. And I know this is quite small, so let me just zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that's a little bit easier for you guys to see. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now, in order to demo this, I kind of learned my lessons from the last, uh, the last Black Hat Python series where people were saying I was using the same machine for both um, the server and the client was a little confusing. So we're going to use different servers this time. I have here a Kali machine and that has this IP address here. I'll just copy that to my clipboard and the TCP client will be from my command OVM, my windows machine here. So what we're going to do just to make this really simple is we're not going to worry about the TCP server in this video, we're going to do that in a future video. So to simulate a TCP server, we're just going to use Netcat. So I'm going to use Netcat. We'll listen on port 9001. Simple enough, right? So once we have instantiated this, and I forgot the new keyword, we got to make sure we have that. Create another variable. We're going to call this variable host name. And let's hover over this since this is red. Could not be found in the namespace. Yeah. So it's in the namespace system.net socket. So that is why we have to declare the import that way. So let's just create a variable called hostname, and that's where we'll put in the IP address of our target. 
which will be the TCP server. And we'll do a client.connect. And this was just from the documentation, this part, by the way. And we'll say we want to connect on 9001. So just to fully clarify for you guys, when I clicked, hey, they said, hey, there's three ways to do the connect function. Click in here. This is the way that we're going to do it. So because this is a method inside of the client, which we've defined as a client, right? We've instantiated the class and we've named it the variable client. So we've taken this TCP client, we've named it client. So that's why we say client.connect to run this. So hopefully, is that, hopefully that's making sense to everyone. And the next thing we need to do is set up our network stream. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we scroll down a little bit more, we see to send and receive data, use get the get stream method to obtain a network stream. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can see their example of doing exactly that. So they just have this part here. And I mean, we can pretty much copy that. We can pretty much do the same, the same thing here. So let's do that. So we'll say using network stream and we'll call it network stream. Set that equal to client.getStream. All right, simple enough. Now we can just simply declare what data we want to send over the network. So we'll call it message, kind of like they did. I think they may have called it data, but we'll call it message and we'll just say hello world, the classic example here. And we'll have it uh, send a carriage return line feed so that, so that way, you know, there's a new line inserted afterwards. And don't forget the semicolon. And once we've done that, all we need to do is say console.write line, send the message. And then we'll have a reader. So using var reader, and this is something we should be able to see. Here, they do a console.read. So different ways to do this, but you can also do reader. So I'll do that. We'll instantiate the stream reader here and even suggests, oops, actually did want to take that suggestion. So we'll do that and encoding. And I'll show you what this is here in a second. We'll encode in UTF-8. And this needs to be capital. And just to explain what this is, this is part of the stream reader class in C sharp. So I can just Google stream reader class C sharp, go to the documentation. And then I see implements a text reader that reads characters from a byte stream in a particular encoding. So that is the purpose of the stream reader class here. And if we want to figure out how to resolve this red squiggly here under encoding, we hover over it, it says does not exist in the current context. The easiest way to figure this out, well, essentially what it means is that we're missing an import up here. There's something we need to be importing. The easiest way to figure out what we're missing in this kind of scenario is to simply Google for encoding, the encoding class. So if I Google encoding C sharp, we see documentation in Microsoft for the encoding class. And we see here under the namespace, that is a part of system.txt. So what that means is we should be able to resolve this simply by importing system.txt. So let's try that. And now we see this is now color coded and the squiggly went away. So all should be good. So the other thing that we're gonna do is actually have the part where we're using this. So we'll declare a byte array an array of bytes called bytes and we'll use the encoding UTF-8 and get bytes. And yeah, it actually, that's a nice thing about using Visual Studio is it was able to 
predict. That's what we wanted to do. And then we'll just do a network stream right. And this is, once again, this is from the doc all the stuff that I'm doing here is simply from the documentation. So if it looks crazy to you and you're not sure why it's working that way, the documentation should set you straight on that. So once we have written the bytes, because what we did is we defined the network stream and the variable here, we defined an array of bytes and we wrote the message as a byte array. And we've sent that across the network. So now all we need to do is write that to the console um, so that we can see from our end that in fact, everything worked as intended. So we can then use the reader and say reader read to end. And that should be all that we need. So if I didn't make any typos here that weren't detected, it should work properly. We'll hit the play button here to go ahead and run that. And it will build and run it. We should see hello world on the terminal here. We do. Now let's check the TCP server. Go ahead and log in. And we see that we got a connection and the string hello world was passed. Now, of course, we're not going to handle that input or be able to do anything from here because we haven't define that logic in the code. So it's going to kind of just hang here until we close it. But we are able to create a TCP client that can send data across the network. This was from one machine to a completely different machine. So in future video, what we're going to do is we're going to also create a C sharp program to serve as our TCP server that we can then use to actually handle that data coming in and then expanding on that to build a fully fledged working netcat program perhaps uh, in the future as well. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stay tuned to the channel. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comment section below if there's any questions, of course, as well. And I will see you right over in those technical videos that I have on the screen for you right now. Thanks for watching.